Hey guys, Paul from Ashley Phoenix. It is new comic book day for the week of June 6th, and we're going to get started right now. Program results. If you guys have been checking out uh, our Tuesday with Holly videos, our uh, weekly vlog on Tuesdays that come out at 4 o'clock, you know that we are now starting up a new mini con. So come out to Vineland, New Jersey, the Brinks Jones Brewery. We are going to have a con called Cos Brew Con, which is basically all kinds of parties anyway, so we're just cutting out the middleman. Uh, it is going to be vendors, it's going to be cosplayers, um, possibly some guests. We don't know yet. We're hoping. Keep your fingers crossed. But also beer, because beer's good. And uh, <laughs> that's what we're going to be doing. So there's going to be a link in the uh, description to uh, get to the event and then also buy tickets. Tickets will be sold at the door, but they'll be $15. Um, and they may be sold out because it is a small venue. Um, you can buy them online now and save money. So do that. Hey guys, Tim from Capes and Scows and the comic book store, and we're going to talk some comics, and I'm going to tell you about the trades that came out this week. We've got Tales of Suspense, Hawkeye, and the Winter Soldier. It was only five issues. For some reason, they did that. Uh, Captain America. Is it considered volume one? No, it is not, because there's a new number one. Of course there is. Uh, this is just this is the Wade and Somni run. They're a good team, but I didn't read that run. We got number one with a bullet from Image. I reviewed issue one. It was really cool. But I didn't keep going with it because I can't. I can't keep going with everything. We have Gotham City Garage for some reason. No, We've not good. No, it's not good. We got Black Bolt, volume two. Also this not, book. Also not great. No? I didn't like it. It got nominated for a bunch of awards. Really? Yeah, I was surprised too. Must have gotten better. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, the art's great. We've got Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps. We've got Kaiju Max by Xander Cannon. This book I've read. This book is fantastic. We've got R the Red Hook, which I assume is a Brooklyn superhero guy. I don't know. I kind of want to read it. We've got Spectacle. I know nothing about this. It's from Oni Press. We've got Hellboy in the BPRD, 1955. I like that they keep churning out these year books. Um... I read some of them, and they were fine. And then we've got Dark Knight's Metal, the Deluxe Edition hardcover. Metal! If you had a hard time tracking down Metal for whatever reason, you missed it, you were on your 15th printing of the Batman Who Laughs, just get this. Make life easy. This is what you need. Metal! First up, we have Justice League, issue number one, because it's not a Justice League book without some major cataclysmic event happening um literally on page one and that's kind of how this is going it is still the aftermath of no justice and metal everything is kind of flowing together uh john johns is the uh new de facto head of the justice league and things go very bad because um a new threat is coming out of the hole in the source wall and it may be the key to uh fixing our universe because it is dying or it could be what destroys the universe we don't know yet but it's probably going to be the latter um the art was good the writing was decent um it's uh zach snyder so not zach snyder it's scott scott snyder, snyder. scott snyder does good work zach snyder not so much <laughs> um but yeah this is something you should be picking up if you are a fan of the justice league um it's a very john john's heavy um issue and i liked it all right, first up, I've got Ant-Man and the Wasp, and it's written by Mark Wade. Uh, I did not want to read this, but I forced myself to. I said, I'm probably going to hate this. I didn't hate it. It was fine. Uh, it's always interesting when, I assume Mark Wade is not a super science guy, but he is writing super science characters. It's always interesting to me when a writer has to, has to do that. Um, it's an interesting story where Scott Lang, and this is Ant-Man and Wasp from the movie that will be coming out. It's that version of those characters. Uh, Scott Lang is out in space. He's at a party or something with the Nova Corps, and he needs Nadia Van Dyne to get him home. And, of course, they screw that up. She goes to save him, and they end up in this strange microverse where there is strange space vampire-style characters. Um... I don't want to spoil too much of it. It was actually pretty fun. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't need any more of this. But it was better than I thought it was going to be. All right, guys. Next up, we have Astonishing X-Men issue number 12. This is technically 
um, what was kind of built to be the end of the series, but it's not the end of the series. It's going to be the end of Charles Soule's run on X-Men, or on Astonishing X-Men. Um, a whole new group, um, a new roster, new art, new everything. Um, so I, this is a great jumping off point for you if you were a fan of the Astonishing X-Men, or it could be a great jumping on point for you to see how things go. This is the end of the Man Called X uh, storyline. It is the last fight between um, the X-Men and Farouk, the Shadow King, because we thought it was the last one, but it's really the last one. We don't know. He keeps coming back. But um, the art was fantastic in this, and the writing was decent enough to, to keep me going. Uh, this has been the uh, X book that I have been keeping in touch with, and I liked it. Um, it went off the rails for an issue or two, but it came back very solid and ended well. Um, curious to see how this one goes. All right, next up we've got Doctor Strange number one, which I didn't notice is also by Mark Wade, And, uh, I mean, it's space Doctor Strange. Meh? The art was really good. Um, Jesus Sayez. Sayez? Sayez? Sayez. Uh, the art was really cool. And there's different, there's an opening scene where uh, he's closing a portal to an evil dimension. And he literally sews it up with magic. Uh, like a surgeon would. Um, the art was really, really good. The story doesn't really grab me yet, but I see what they're setting up. This has good potential. Um, it's basically strange. He loses his magical abilities. They slowly start fizzling out, and he is trying to figure out how to like recharge, what is wrong with it. He goes, finally, after all the magic fails and nobody knows how to help him, he goes to Tony Stark, who attacks the problem like an engineer would and he says you're probably just burned out go out into another universe find another sorcerer be like hey how do i fix my magic problem it's a basic idea um it doesn't go too well for him but space strange Woo. and of course my pick of the week it's the same thing it is every two weeks why not because i'm a huge fan of the series it's just that there's literally nothing better on the on the market right now so it is batman issue number 48 uh it is a joker centric issue if you are a fan of how tom king writes the joker and um particularly during the uh war of jokes and riddles you're going to love this issue um it's so good uh there's so much to say about it but i can't really say a lot it's a uh, uh, the Joker is really off his rails, and he's off his rails because he knows that Batman is getting married, and that means somebody uh, in Gotham is more important than him in Batman's life, and he doesn't really appreciate it, and things go bad from there. Uh, this, I can't, I can't rave about Tom King any more than I already do. Uh, the art was, eh, it was okay, because um, unfortunately with uh, Batman, it is a platoon of artists who... Uh, change every now and then and it's really tough coming off of tony daniels and then coming to this artist nothing against him it's just to me it's a downgrade uh, but the story was more than enough to um handle the downgraded art and i really want to see how this one uh, turns out all right time for my pick of the week and i didn't think this would be my pick of the week but oh yeah deadpool number one is my pick of the week so I started reading this, and I'm like, something about this seems familiar and kind of fun. And then I looked at who the writer was, and it's Scotty Young. And I love Scotty Young on I Hate Fairyland, and he, he is a special kind of zany. Uh, and it fits Deadpool really well. Um, Deadpool has lost a lot of his memories. He's taking smaller hits, and he just wants to have a better origin story so people can be more sympathetic to him. Uh, he is teamed up with Negasonic Teenage Warhead. There's a great joke about them being paired together because of the movie. Um, there's a great gag about pouches. Like, There's a lot of good stuff in here. And if you like Scotty Young and the way he writes I Hate Fairyland, you will love this book. Um, I don't know. I would read another issue or two of it. I'm not a huge Deadpool guy, so this is kind of surprising for me. I'm just taking this in stride. But, uh, yeah, it was fun. All right, guys, that is it. There's a thing here and a thing there, and I love whatever's over here. But come to the Cosbrew Con, because if you don't, Paul will cry, and I don't have a towel to clean up all those soggy Paul tears. I don't want to. I'm not compassionate. I'm not going to console him. 
I'm probably going to make him cry more. So come out and make his con a huge success, and we'll have fun. I believe I'll be there. I know our store will be there. I gotta believe I'm the I'm the man for this job, the beer comic job. Uh, so you can come hang out with me and tell me how bad I am at reviewing comics. I always enjoy that. And uh, yeah, click on whatever this is here. This is the thing I love the most.